Hey everyone, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to be designing a simple limiter device in Reactor. If you like this tutorial, please give a subscription to our YouTube channel. We really would appreciate it. Alright, so let's get started. Today I'm going to be working off of a piece of code that I found in a book called DAFX, which is the same book I used for a uh, rotating Leslie effect that we built last week. And this time I'm going to be working off of some code instead of a diagram. So it's going to be a slightly different process. So the first line of code here is just a function declaration. It's just telling us what our function is and what values it's going to receive with that function. Um, so to create something similar to this in Reactor, I simply use a macro with an input for each parameter that the function receives. And we're going to have to end up changing this later on, but to start, you can just create a simple macro with an input of LT and another input called uh, X of N. X of N is just DSP speak for the input to a function. Alright, so the next pieces of code that we have here are just some declaration of constant values. And if we were in core, maybe we'd take the time to uh, create some constants and create some quick buses off of those with the same names that they have in the uh, code here. But in Reactor Primary, there's not really an easy way to do that. So when it tells you that the value AT is equal to 0 0.3 or whatever, we're just going to remember that's the value. And when we see that value, we can plug it into our code. So we can skip these next lines of code here. All right, next up we have this loop statement here, which is another thing that we can ignore since it's just looping through the points of audio data, which Reactor does automatically, so we don't need to worry about it. So this piece of code I've highlighted now is what we're going to be implementing today. So the first thing we're going to do is take an absolute value of our incoming audio. This is easy enough. Just use the rectify function in primary. All right, so our next lines of code are going to be comparing two values, and then depending on which value is larger, um, we're going to be sending a value to the output. So I'm going to create a new macro for this function um, because we're going to end up utilizing stuff like this several times in the in the throughout the course of this project. So we're going to have a macro with four inputs. We're going to call them a, b. 0 and 1. So what we're going to do first is compare A against B. And if A is greater than B, then we'll send out the input at value uh, at the input of 1. And if A is less than B, then we'll send out the input incoming to input 0. So we can achieve this very easily with a compare module and a selector module. And we'll simply run the greater than output of the compare into the position of the selector and the zero into the zero input of the selector and one input into the one input of the selector. And the output of the selector is the output of our macro. Easy enough. And we'll be using this uh, function several times, like I said. And you can just name this select or whatever so you can uh, remember what it does next time you want to use it. And so this is going to take as inputs the absolute value of our input, or A, uh, which we calculated earlier, and another value called xpeak. xpeak is an interesting one because we're actually going to calculate it uh, every tick of the sample clock and use it uh, the previously calculated value for our next sample. So I'm going to so I've created an input called xpeak and we're going to end up running the newly calculated xpeak out of this macro and back into it. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. But for now we're just going to set up um, this piece of code here so that if a is greater than xpeak then we will output the AT value, or 0.3, and if A is not larger than XPeak, then we'll output
input the RT value or 0 0.01. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is calculate our X peak value for our next sample. So we're going to take the coefficient coming out of here and subtract it from 1. That value ends up getting multiplied by our previous x peak value. And then we're going to add that product to um, the product of coefficient times a, where coefficient is the uh, output of our, our select macro that we just created. So let's just take a moment to set up all that math. And when you're doing stuff like this, it's really important to remember the order of operations. And what I mean by that is you want to do anything that's in parentheses first. You want to take care of your multiplication and division second. And then you can take care of your addition and subtraction modules. And with computer programming, generally, they'll do a pretty decent job of kind of spelling that out for you. But for example, here, we want to make sure we multiply um, the absolute value of our input times the output of our select macro, uh, known in the code as coefficient times a. We want to do that before um, we add those values two together. All right, and so this value we just calculated is our new x peak value. And so what I'm going to do is create a new terminal output and we're going to run this output directly into the x peak input that we have. We can't do it directly because Reactor won't let you. So what we'll do is connect the output to an add module, we'll add it to zero, and then uh, we can run from the add module back into the uh, input. And if you tried to do this with events, it would give you a an event loop. Uh, however, with audio, it'll just delay the uh, the value by one sample. So this won't cause any problems for us. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is this line here. Um, and this is going to do a, a minimum function where we're going to supply a couple values and it's going to output the minimum value there. So to implement this in Reactor, we can use the select macro that we already made. And by running the proper values into the inputs, uh, we can choose the uh, minimum value pretty easily. All right, so we'll calculate LT divided by our X peak value, and we can use that as the inputs for the B and 1 of our select macro. And then we can just use a constant value of 1 for the A and 0 inputs. And this way, the output of this macro will never be greater than 1. And next, we want to implement another select macro. Oops, not this one here, but the one beneath that. Okay. And this is going to be pretty simple. It'll be almost exactly like our first one, but the uh, AT and RT values are going to be swapped. So this one selects as its inputs um, the F value that we just created and a new value g that we haven't begun working with yet but it's going to function uh, almost identically to the x peak function and that we're going to need its own input and then we're going to calculate a new value that we send to the output and wrap back around into the input all right and so we can just copy these values and reverse the order for our zero and one inputs All right, so I'm just going to speed up some things here. Uh, we want to then calculate our new value for g. So we'll start by subtracting uh, the coefficient, or the output of our select module, from 1. And then we can multiply that by g. And then we can also calculate our 
uh, coefficient times f, which is the output of our previous select macro. And then we can add those two modules together, uh, the two multiplication modules together. And that's going to give us our new g value to use for our next sample. And so to do that, we can simply do the same thing we did with our xpeak and route the value back into the input of our macro. All right, and so we just calculated g, and that is the overall gain to our input value. So now all we need to do is multiply our input by uh, this g value. And it's not quite the same in the code because they're using buffers and all sorts of stuff that we're not really going to bother with. If we wanted to do that, we could delay this signal somewhat. I'm not sure how necessary it is. I couldn't really get any uh, concrete results out of that that really changed anything. So I kind of decided to ignore the delay line. And so our output is y of n. So we have x of n as an input, y of n as an output. And this uh, LT value here is going to be the maximum of our output. It's going to be the maximum value output out of our limiter macro here. So to test this, I'm going to use a simple sine oscillator with an xy module. And we'll use a ramp uh, oscillator to uh, display the output on an XY module, as I'll show you in just a moment. So we can use the output of the ramp uh, to the X input and the output of the sine to the Y input to create a simple uh, oscilloscope. Alright, so that will be the uh, part of our function that's going through the limiter and then we can duplicate the xy module and um, have another one that just kind of shows us what the value looks like when it's uh, when it's dry when it's not going through the limiter so let's just set the xy module up real simple I'm going to give it a y range of negative 2 to 2 so you can see the whole thing and this one will get information straight from the sign Oh, and one other thing we want to do is multiply the output of our sine wave um, by an amplitude value so that we can ensure that um, it goes outside of our threshold limit and we can see uh, how our limiter is going to rein in the excess values, causing a little bit of distortion along the way. All right, so let's just turn the whole thing to be mono, and we can take a look. All right, it looks like I forgot to put the new amplified sine wave into our second XY here, so let's just change that. And you can see uh, as we go uh, to really high amplitudes, our values stay the same, and with anything less than the threshold, our sine wave just passes through unhindered. All right, uh, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Uh, please check out our site if you liked this tutorial. We have a ton of text-based tutorials where I'm able to go a little more in-depth into stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, see you again next week.